Hey everybody from Windy Acre Bees. Uh, there was a little question that I just want to answer for everybody in general um, or try to help answer and I'm glad that this person asked it. Um, the question was, uh, when you compete in the feed, are you aren't you worried about the diseases, uh, diseases your bees are going to get and uh, spread? Um, the short answer to that is no. Uh, here's community feeder number two. Um, they are all empty already and uh, the explanation behind the amounts of bees uh, is in a couple other videos that you guys are going to be watching here shortly. Um, mostly for the most part these are my girls. Um, I'm going to head over to the colonies now. But to answer that question, um, when there's a dearth and the bees are looking for food, um, these flowers here are not pollinating flowers. They don't carry any pollen. And uh, these over here do not carry any this time of year. So they are foraging in dumpsters. They are foraging in people's trash cans. They are foraging at your local dump. Um, they are foraging on, um, you know, rotten fruit somewhere. You know, maybe some rotten apples around. And that is where they're going to get their diseases from. Um, one of the main things that they can get is nosema, and by feeding them in a community feed here at our property, I know what is going into that, and you can see just how happy they are today. Um, they are just really, really busy. So um, by me community feeding them, I know that I'm feeding them pollen substitute, which contains, you know, vitamins, minerals, amino B acids, um, all that stuff to clean their digestive tract out, to keep their esophagus, um, their, uh, their um, I'm sorry, but I just can't remember right now, but their entire system is clean uh, and helping them, um, you know, uh, be resistant to the stuff that they may pick up, you know, while they're out foraging. So the biggest um, concern I have, you know, especially this time of year, is the varroa mites. And those uh, varroa mites are being picked up from, um, from your plants and your flowers that are out here uh, when they're foraging, when they're out and about. That's where these mites come from. Um, you know, when they're inside of a uh, colony, those mites lay eggs inside the cells. This, uh, they, 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 the mites, uh, that's how they uh, populate in there and that's how they get to your, um, your brood and your larva and suck them dry. And that's uh, a lot of how they get spread inside of a colony to other bees here. So um, am I worried about that? No, I know what I'm putting inside those feeders that are over there. I know they're getting sugar, they're getting clean water. Um, they're getting, uh, you know, like I said, the pollen substitute and, uh, you know, all the goodies that I give them, the essential oils and stuff. So they're getting clean feed. And uh, I'd rather them stay here and community feed than take off to McDonald's down the street or your Dunkin' Donuts or your local landfill and uh, be feeding and bringing back stuff from there back to these colonies like soda and uh, sugar-filled coffee and uh, things like that. So. Um, just to answer that question, um, so don't be worried about your community feeding. The only thing you want to be concerned about is um, keeping a watch of your bees over at the community feeders. If you notice, um, you know, you, you have about your 20 to 40,000 bees around your feeders, that's great. Uh, but if all of a sudden one day there's just um, double that or triple that, like I have had today, then you know they are coming from another colony also and um, so then you may have to get back to your in-high feeders which um, we're going to be doing here as of tomorrow night anyways we got about a 65 degree quiet day tomorrow so we'll do one more community feed but uh, for right now we're planning going back to in-high feeding anyways here until the end of the month or until we get our first frost anyways so um, hope that answers your question and i hope you guys uh, understand the thinking behind that uh, a lot of uh, you know well more longer experienced beekeepers than i uh, we'll tell you that usually the same thing. EAS certified bee beekeepers would agree with that, and uh, and I would have to agree with that based on you know my bees and my thinking. So um, add that to your book of notes. Um, you know, to each his own. Again, give your bees what your bees need. Treat your bees the way you need to treat your bees. We just offer suggestions and help in in, in your in your apiary raising, and uh, that's really our whole point. Um, nobody has the perfect answer, but these are time tested. Um, you know things that we do and uh, we just try to get the word out to other people to try them and use them for their colonies and hopefully they work out too. So have a good night everybody. Um, I got some kind of exciting news, at least it is to me, um, in another video or two or three that we'll be showing you here over the next uh, day or two and um, we'll be going from there. So have a good night everybody and we'll talk to you soon.